Hey guys, Barbara here. I am so excited today. Well, you guys know I'm always excited when I'm doing the show, so that's a given. But look what I'm making. Apple pie, just in time for Thanksgiving 2016. Apple pie with a twist. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Dried foods for raisins in it too, but I like these. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. So the complaint that I get a whole lot from my friends and family and viewers and subscribers is that some of you uh, don't do well with dough, pie dough or bread dough, any type of dough. So this apple pie, I'm telling you guys, is for people that can't handle dough so well. Now you can go down to the store and buy that roll of the cinnamon rolls that you get from the freezer from the um, grocery store and you can just take them out and use them as a part of this recipe and I'll show you how to do the filling or if you are brave like me you may want to go ahead and make your cinnamon rolls from scratch now you guys may or may not know that I have two awesome cinnamon roll recipes here at the site already the one that I love the most is the one that's called ooey gooey cinnamon rolls and I don't want you to have to go searching for that video so I'm gonna show you what I did just a little bit earlier this morning to make the cinnamon rolls from scratch and then we're gonna pick up where we're making the actual filling for the pie and assembling the apple pie so let's take a look eight cups of all-purpose flour one stick of butter that I'm gonna melt, two eggs, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt. Keep this all together in one group, okay? It's gonna be easier for you. Over here, it's a pack of um, instant pudding, vanilla flavor, two cups of cold milk, keep that together. And then here, it's two tablespoons of active dry yeast, half a cup of the um, warm water to activate the yeast. And you can also use, if you don't buy your yeast like this, you can use two of these packets, okay? But if you don't have that, buy the yeast by the pound and use two tablespoons. And this is what I'm going to do. Just add the water to the yeast. I'm going to steal a little bit of the sugar because it's all going to go to the same place anyways. To just activate the yeast. And let this go for about eight minutes. And then I'll be back. The yeast still has about two more minutes to go, so I'm going to go ahead and activate my instant pudding. And don't buy any other flavor, okay? The vanilla is the best to do this with. Just dump it in there. And whisk. And this is going to firm up pretty quickly, all right? Because you know this is instant pudding. Look, see? I melted the butter. And pretty soon we're just going to be kneading up the dough. You guys, it's not hard at all to make cinnamon rolls. You know, don't think it's too daunting. If you want to go buy the stuff from the store, go ahead. But I, I can't stand the taste. But if you want it to be an easy dessert, you can do that, all right? So let me go ahead and whisk. Make a well. The salt. Oh, making a mess sugar, melted butter, the eggs, the yeast. Just give this a mix and you don't need any kind of stand mixer, okay? I'm adding the instant pudding mix and remember that we're using the vanilla flavor. We don't want to use any other flavor because it'll mess with the taste of the rolls, okay? And I want you to add this in because it really makes the rolls very, very moist. So now all I have to do is add warm water from the faucet a little bit at a time. And this is pretty much all I can teach you about making dough. Whenever you're adding wet ingredient, to the dry ingredients you want to add it slowly because you don't want to overly wet the dough because then you're going to have to go back and add flour and that tends to make um, your bread or your rolls come out kind of dry so just work with it patiently you guys know how i do it at some point 
I, I, I keep working with it in the bowl and then at some point I dump it on the counter and you're gonna feel when that point is right for you. And then I do get my hands cleaned off and dried because it's easier to handle the dough if your hands don't have the sticky stuff all over it, okay? So now all I'm gonna do is continue to roll this into a ball. Flour your countertop as needed. You don't need a whole lot for this dough because this dough is not too wet at all. And um, you just wanna go and make the ball smooth. You're gonna put it back in the same bowl that you kneaded it up in because I don't believe in washing two and three times when I'm doing stuff in the kitchen. You don't need to grease the bottom of the bowl. You don't need to grease the top of the uh, dough. You don't need none of that. Cover it up with a towel. Two hours later, remove the towel. And this towel is from Don and Marie. Thank you, Don and Marie, for donating to the show. So let me work on my dough. And all I want to do is get the air out. And I'm so glad that I'm able to like redo this recipe to show you guys because this is such a fun recipe. And um, even though you can go and, like I said, buy the stuff at the store, it'll be fun to do this. You know, if you want to do this for Thanksgiving because you can have cinnamon rolls and you can have cinnamon roll apple pie. So now this is the most difficult part of making cinnamon rolls is kneading this dough to the length that you're gonna need for it to be. So the width is not too wide, but the length. You wanna go really, really long, and you just wanna take your time with it. You know, put some flour on the counter and just go, look what fun I'm having. I'm having a really, really good time. So this is a big rectangle, and I'm just gonna keep flattening it out every part that I see thickness. Now let me work on the middle. This is brown sugar, light or dark will do, it doesn't matter. Two cups of brown sugar, and you don't really have to pack it too tight and two tablespoons of um, powdered cinnamon. And Joe asked, what if we put more? Well, it's just gonna taste more cinnamon cinnamony, and maybe you might not like that. So I've melted some butter. You don't wanna melt too much butter at a time because you don't wanna have melted butter sit there and get hard. Joe kinda went and messed with my dough and some of it is hanging off of the counter. I'm gonna get him for that because now I'm gonna have to go all the way there with the sugar and get some on the floor. So let me go ahead and just sprinkle my brown sugar cinnamon mixture to cover everything. And now it's nip, tuck, and roll. And you just want to go back and forth. And when you roll it, you want to tuck it as tight as you can. Just go on ahead and tuck. And by the end of this, this is going to look like a big snake. For my Belizeans that are watching, Joe says it reminds him of a waula. <laughs> so you want to go ahead and seal it at the seam. So just keep on pinching it to seal it and then turn it down on its seam. And then now I would normally measure two inches for my cinnamon rolls, but I'm gonna measure one inch for right now to get what I need to make the, um, the dough for the pie. So I don't want it to be too thick, right? And I need about a dozen pieces. So this is what I'm doing right here. All right guys, so the remainder of what we don't use for the pie is what we're gonna put our cinnamon rolls, okay? So I'm moving pretty fast here because I don't want these to rise on me too quickly before I put them like this, all right? Meanwhile, take a look at this. All the pieces that we put off just now, we're gonna flatten them a little bit and put for the bottom part of the pie. And we're gonna make our pie filling right now. All right guys, so for the apple pie filling part of it, it's three medium apples. Do not use Granny Smith, okay? two-thirds cup of regular white sugar, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, um, one teaspoon of uh, cinnamon, and it's gonna be one tablespoon of lemon juice, so it's half of a lemon, I just squeezed it, and that's why you don't want Granny Smith. So let me go ahead and peel these quickly, they're washed. I'm using this apple core thing that Jory bought for the show, but it's still too thick, so I've sliced the slices a little bit thinner. And then I'm adding the sugar, the flour, the cinnamon, and of course the lemon juice. And this is what I like about my apple pie is that it's real. Now let me go ahead and grease my pie dish. And this is from Pioneer Woman's setup or brand. I, I really love that lady. I wish I could meet her. Now I'm layering the bottom part of the pie pan with the cinnamon rolls. And you could see how this would be easy if you just bought the thing from the store, right? Just layer it and squeeze it shut because this is the bottom. I have eight pieces in here and, and I flattened the pieces out with a rolling pin. And I'm adding my pie filling. And then on the top, it's just four pieces because I want it to be able to breathe and cook the apples pretty fast, all right? And this is where we are now, guys. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got this tray of actual cinnamon rolls. Let me see how many. It's one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, 15. We've got quite a bit. And then 
we've got this. I use like 12 pieces, I believe. Eight on the bottom and four on the top to make our pie. So now into the oven, they go, and I'm gonna watch them because the cinnamon rolls don't take too long to bake, like 20, 25 minutes. So I'm gonna see if the um, apple pie needs to go a little bit longer, okay? All right, so into the oven they go. This is my cinnamon apple pie and my cinnamon rolls. And I'm gonna be back to check on these in a half hour. If you made the cinnamon rolls from scratch like I did and you have leftovers that you baked, it'll take 30 minutes. Immediately after removing from the oven, while they're still warm, you wanna go ahead and brush some melted butter on top and then you wanna go ahead and glaze it. For this glaze, what I did this time around, cause I do different glaze for my cinnamon rolls. I did a cup of icing sugar or powdered sugar a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of light uh, corn syrup, the brand happened to be Kero, everybody knows it as Kero syrup, and then just add milk to the consistency that you want, and then just drizzle it on top of the cinnamon rolls, and those are ready. So the apple pie, on the other hand, will take a little bit longer, and I'll show you guys that in a second. This is 40 minutes later. I can see that the apples are cooked on the inside. I would suggest that you leave more of an opening when you put the topping, okay, so that the apples can be sure to cook. I just dabbed a little bit of butter with the brush and then using the same glaze that I used on the cinnamon rolls. And I'm gonna cut that first piece out because it's cooled down quite a bit. And let me get this first piece out. Of course, you would not be eating a big piece like this. I always cut it big so you guys can see how it looks right so take a look oh my goodness it's gorgeous i can't wait to dive into this and taste look at how this is in two more days it's gonna be thanksgiving 2016. i've been uploading videos since last week with recipes and ideas for you guys to use for your thanksgiving menu so yesterday was the pretzel salad pretzel jello cream cheese you know all that good stuff and then today is the um cinnamon rolls or cinnamon buns apple pie wasn't that pretty unique i'm so glad somebody was posting that all over facebook so i can share it with you guys now tomorrow is my wednesday video i'm not gonna be uploading anything thanksgiving for tomorrow okay the reason why is because in my household when thanksgiving is approaching we eat things that are completely opposite of what we're gonna eat on Thanksgiving Day because we wanna enjoy what we're gonna make for Thanksgiving Day. So for Thanksgiving Day, we're gonna make turkey, stuffing, rice and beans, potato salad, plantains, we don't do cranberry and all that stuff. And then whatever desserts the kids like. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be uploading two videos. Yes, you heard right, two videos. The first one is gonna be green and red salsa, the Mexican style salsas, because I'm so tired of looking for those two salsas inside my Mexican tamales video. By the way, did you guys notice how many views my Mexican tamales video has? Over a hundred thousand. Oh my God, that's so cool. Anyways, I'm tired of looking for those um, two recipes. So I've pulled them out, redid them, and I'm putting them as a separate video at the site because after that, like within you know, a few minutes after that, I'm gonna upload another video, which is my Wednesday video, and it's gonna be burrito, okay? We're gonna uh, replicate the burrito that I always get at Chabalita when I go to LA. And of course, we're gonna make it better. Not just replicate, but make it better. And um, we're gonna put the salsas in the burrito. So I'm gonna make something completely different than Thanksgiving. And um, after tomorrow's upload, you won't see me again till Monday, okay? So I did like a lot of uploads these past few days because I really wanted to get some recipes out there for you guys. And um, yeah, you'll see me Monday again. Okay, I almost forgot. I have to give a shout out to Telford Guzman. Yes. You're a Belizean guy that went to the shop and you really made a big deal about me to daddy and you kind of made his day and you kind of made my day. <laughs> Shout out to you and your sweetie. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you for sharing it, man. Thank you for going there and, you know, telling dad how much you appreciate me. And um, yeah, I wish mom were there, you know, to hear you because she would have made a big to do about that. So shout out to Telford uh, Guzman. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you so much. Make sure you comment. Make sure you rate, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you go make these recipes. Bye.